Hi, my name is Mark Rulo. I'm one of the mathematics consultants in the Learning Success Center at Mount Wachusett Community College. In this video, I'm going to talk about different kinds of calculators and some of the common mistakes people make when using them. First, calculators come in a range of styles and prices. The most basic calculator will have just a few functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You're going to need something with a few more capabilities than this. At the other end of the spectrum are graphing calculators. These have lots of functions, but at costs approaching or exceeding $100, these may be more than you need, especially for an introductory class. A good middle ground calculator would be a scientific calculator, something like the TI-30X. These calculators might cost as much as $20 or $30, but I've seen them at certain stores for as little as $5. Your phone probably already has a calculator, and so does your computer. You want to make sure that whichever calculator you use has the ability to use parentheses and can do exponents and square roots. If your phone calculator does not have those functions, try flipping it on its side to see if that gives you more options. You can also download other calculator apps, often for free, which have the extra features. And if you use your computer's calculator, it can be switched from standard mode to scientific mode. For this video, I will concentrate on using the TI-30X scientific calculator. Generally, other calculators will operate in a similar way. Let's take a quick look at the calculator. The number pad is in gray keys towards the bottom in the middle. The big four operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, are in blue on the right, as is the equal sign. There may be some other buttons in dark blue at the top that you are not yet familiar with. We will get to some of those later. Let's try a simple example first. How about 3 plus 4 times 5? In this expression, there are two operators, the plus sign and the multiplication sign. What do we do here? Somewhere along the way, you probably learned about order of operations, PEMDAS. It tells you the order to perform operations when you have more than one in your expression. P stands for parentheses which are equivalent to braces and brackets. When there are multiple parentheses, we work from inner parentheses to outer, then left to right. E stands for exponents. M and D are multiplication and division. They have the same rank in PEMDAS and are executed from left to right. And A and S are for addition and subtraction. They also have the same rank and are done from left to right. So in this expression, we do the multiplication first, which gets us 20. Then we do the addition, which gets us 23. Your calculator is already programmed to follow the order of operations. Try it. 3 plus 4 times 5 equals 23. What if we really wanted to multiply 5 times the sum of 3 and 4? This is where the parentheses come in handy. By entering the sum inside the parentheses, we force that part to be done first, which is 7. Then we multiply by 5, which gets us 35. Try it on the calculator. Parentheses, 3 plus 4 close parentheses, times 5, equals 35. Another way to do this is to enter 3 plus 4, then equals. Then hit the multiplication sign. The calculator remembers your last answer, and you can continue a calculation with that last saved number. Let's finish this one. So we said times, we put in the 5, and equals again, 35. Let's look at another example. Negative 6 plus 2 times 3. Again, 
the multiplication takes place first. And this part equals 6. And so negative 6 plus 6 equals 0. But look what happens when I enter this into the calculator. Minus 6, wait, why is the previous answer being pulled into this expression? Because the calculator thinks you want to subtract 6 from the previous answer. Note, there are two buttons that look similar, the subtraction sign and this button here, which has the smaller dash inside parentheses. This button is to make a negative number. So, if we clear the previous part, we will now enter negative 6 plus 2 times 3 and equals and we get the answer of 0. Here's a division problem. 5 plus 3 divided by 3 minus 1. When we evaluate by hand, we would calculate the numerator and denominator separately. That's 8 divided by 2, and then we do the division to get the answer, 4. What happens when we try entering this in the calculator? 5 plus 3 divided by 3 minus 1 equals 5. What happened? Here, the calculator again simply followed the order of operations. When the calculator sees 5 plus 3 divided by 3 minus 1, it will do the division first, 3 divided by 3, which is 1, and then it will do the addition and subtraction and 5 plus 1 minus 1 equals 5. Whenever you have a fraction and there are operations in the numerator or denominator, use parentheses to separate those parts. When you use the parentheses, the calculator will now know to calculate 5 plus 3 and 3 minus 1 separately, and then to divide 8 by 2, which gives us 4. Sometimes we are asked to square a number. When we square a number, we multiply it by itself. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and so on. What if we want to square negative 4? Well, that's just negative 4 times negative 4. And a negative times a negative makes a positive. And 4 times 4 is 16. So the square of negative 4 is 16. Try it in the calculator. The button for taking the square usually looks like this. So enter negative 4 squared equals negative 16. Now what's going on? Again, this is an order of operations issue. The calculator saw the exponent, and the negative sign out front is interpreted as multiplying what comes after it by negative 1. So here, the calculator saw 4 squared, which is 16, and then multiplied that by negative 1 to get negative 16. Anytime you want to square a negative number, you must put that number in parentheses. parentheses negative 4, close parentheses, squared, equals 16. You can always put a positive number in parentheses when squaring. That won't hurt anything. So if it helps, you can always remember to put the number you are squaring in parentheses, and you'll never go wrong. Sometimes we are asked to take the square root of a number. When we take a square root, we are finding which positive number, when multiplied by itself, gets us the number indicated. For example, the square root of 25 is 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. The symbol for a square root looks like this. On your calculator, the square root symbol may be written in blue or yellow right above the x square button. These parts written above are the secondary uses of each button. To take the square root of a number on your calculator, you will first hit the second button, then the x squared button. This brings up the square root symbol on your screen, plus an open parenthesis. 
you will get the square root of whatever is inside the parentheses after the square root symbol. If you just have a number, put it in and hit enter. For example, the square root of 25 equals 5. If you have a more complicated problem, like the square root of 5 plus 3 divided by 3 minus 1, you will need to add extra parentheses to separate the numerator from the denominator. You may be asked to make calculations with different exponents. For example, what is 3 to the fourth power? On a lot of calculators, an exponent is indicated by using the caret button, which looks like this. In this example, we would enter into the calculator 3 raised to the fourth power, which is 81. Don't forget, you may need to use parentheses with your exponent in some problems. For example, find 2 raised to the 3 times 2 power. By hand, we calculate the exponent to be 3 times 2, or 6, and 2 raised to the 6th power is 64. What does the calculator say when we put that in? 2 raised to the 3 times 2 equals 16. What happened? Again, the order of operations is what happened. The calculator saw an exponent and a multiplication and did the exponent part first. 2 raised to the third power, which is 8, which was then multiplied by 2 to get 16. To get the answer we want, we put the terms in the exponent in parentheses. 2 raised to the parentheses 3 times 2, close parentheses, which becomes 2 raised to the sixth power, which equals 64. Let's try that on the calculator. That's 2 raised to the parentheses 3 times 2 close parentheses equals, and it is indeed 64. What if you are asked to take a third root, or some other root besides a square root? A square root is the same as raising a number to the one half power. A third root is the same as raising a number to the one-third power, and so on. Taking a third root means finding the number, which times itself three times, gets you to the desired number. The third root of 27 is 3, for example, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. You can take the third root of a number on the calculator by typing the number, let's stick with 27, hitting the caret button, then putting one third in parentheses, and enter. The answer is three. Here's another way to do that. Look above the exponent button. Here it is written with a root symbol with an X inside the crooked part. This is to take the X root of a number. Here I can choose which root to take. If I want the third root of 64, I would enter the 3 for third root first this time, hit second, then the exponent button, then 64, and equals, and it equals 4, since 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. Here are a couple last tips for getting started with your calculator. First, you may need to use the number pi. It's a special number in math, and it approximately equals 3.14159. It's actually a decimal that goes on forever and never repeats, as far as we can tell. It has a special symbol, too, the Greek letter pi, which looks like this. And on the TI-30X, that key is located here. For fun, let's take pi and divide by 2. Now let's take this number and enter it into the expression 3x squared minus 5x plus 9. 
Some people might write down this number from the calculator and re-enter it into the expression, but here's a better way. If you want to use the previous answer as part of a new calculation, use the answer function, found here above the negative number sign. So for this example, I will enter 3 times second answer squared minus 5 times second answer plus 9 and equals. In some problems, you will be asked to round off your answer. Here's a tip. Only round off at the end. If you round off any of your intermediate answers, you may end up with the wrong answer in the end. For example, using 3.14 for pi instead of the longer version in the calculator may change the final answer enough to do you wrong. These are just a few of the issues that can come up when using your calculator. For more information, consult your calculator's user's manual. A lot of questions about your specific model of calculator can also be answered by checking Google or YouTube. Or stop by the Learning Success Center where one of our math consultants can help you. Let us know if you have any ideas for examples that would go well in an updated version of this video. And let us know if there are other videos you would like to see in this series. For more information about the Learning Success Center, check out our website or email, call, or just drop by. Good luck, and I hope to see you this semester in the Learning Success Center.